the Dave Damashek Football Program. Available on Apple Podcasts and at NFL.com slash DDFP. Now here's your host, Dave Damashek. Hi and hello, football fans. I hope all's well wherever you are here in Studio 66. Things are festive once again. Not for me. No, for the two people seated to my immediate left, last week we sat down with Maurice Jones-Drew and Colleen Wolf, both of whom had something to celebrate. Today we are joined, not by Maurice, because I don't know where he is off licking his wounds, but first of all, let's say hello and heartiest of muzzle tubs to Philadelphia's favorite daughter. Here she is, everybody. It's the Wolf, Colleen Wolf! Enough, enough. Like so, so to just make it clear. I want to hear the whole thing. We're not. You're not jumping on. You can listen to old shows. I know you. <laughs> we, we, you can go back and listen though. We don't have time for that. We have a lot to kibitz about here. We do. We do. By the way, okay. So yes, the wolf muzzle tub. You're not a, a bandwagon jumper here. No. You have. Uh, you are authentic. Kelly Green and uh, Philly Girl and all that jazz. Yes, I I do not associate myself with a lot of the terrible fans uh, that we've seen all over Twitter and everything else. I'm not going around and punching horses uh, or anything. Never. You've never punched a horse. No, but you know what? I kind of want to fight that guy now. Hmm. What? Interesting. How about the guy? guy? Yeah. You know what? I think. I think you could find these stories. I noticed they're really popping up for this Eagles game. I think you could find them if you wanted to go look for them before and after basically any NFL uh, game. And people people right? make up their little stories of Isolated like, okay. Isolated incidents. Yeah, you could find it. Like, oh, the Packers are the greatest fans. The Vikings. Like, you could find this stuff anywhere. Look who wants it. Look who yeah. learned at the knee of Belichick. Belichick's favorite son. Here he is, everybody. He's oh, the boss. Not supposed to talk it or From something. around the NFL. <laughs> here he I don't know if the Patriots are going to win. I don't <laughs> think. Eagles are good. Here he is. It's Greg Rosenthal. Everybody. Muzzle tough to you as well you've done it again Cal first question it's enough already right I I said that after they beat the Seahawks I said I'm good I mean it's nice to keep watching but that was the one where I felt like that's enough now everything after that is just kind of anticlimactic no I I cannot believe the Eagles are playing the Patriots again in a Super Bowl that is a that's a weird little wrinkle about this. We're going to jump in on all of it where the two fan bases uh, mentally, emotionally and otherwise <laughs> reside. Also, there's a fan base everybody all third there are 30 teams out there with various uh, degrees of uh, sorrow going on right now. I don't think there are any and with all due respect to Jags fans, I think Steelers fans felt entitled to at minimum a shot at the Patriots. In the title game, they didn't even get that. They shot themselves in the foot. We don't know exactly who was doing the shooting, though, or if it were multiple parties doing that uh, in black and gold. We're going to jump in on all that with our pal Mark Caballi from The Athletic. He is uh, in the locker room each and every day um, covering those Steelers. He's going to provide insight for us on where Levy and Bell is going. If he will come back into that locker room once again, Martavis Bryant, Mike Mitchell, the coaching changes, who was responsible for the uh, the lack of discipline schematically and otherwise against the Jags. So good stuff coming up with Kabali. All right, back to back yeah. to the matter at hand and kibitzing about the, the two of you. The Wolf, I want to hear about uh, where – so. 52 is now set. You know, mm-hmm. the, it draws ever closer. Tell us first about your experience. Was it, was it, was it, oh, pro tip, by the way. Before yeah. Before you jump in, I'm pretty sure that uh, you will, uh, you will affirm what I'm about to say. That uh, if you have a choice going forward and you're a diehard fan of your team, better to be at the home title game oh. than it is to be at the Super Bowl. You've been at both, Rosenthal. Which, uh, how, where do you come down? I think that's absolutely right. I haven't yeah. been to either as a fan. I've only been in the press box or – It's a little you know, different. The, it's just very different, I would say. <laughs> What's that like, actually? Because I, I, I've never been in Heinz Field's press box so for a weird. big game. Are you? Do you, you I, abide by the law, which is a, a well, crazy law that you're not allowed to make noise and cheer for your team? Well, the only one that I've been to – the only game I've been to – in the last decade at Foxborough was last year's AFC championship win over uh, your Steelers. And it wasn't, I didn't like that. No, cause I'm sitting, I wasn't cheering or doing anything like that. I'm sitting next to, you know, Judy Batista and Peter King and all these people. Right. It's like, what, what am I going to do? I was cheer, a, be, I, a, be a human what being. I, I, I but you're, you're in the press box and, 
that that one's open. Is that one open air or not? No, it must not be in Foxborough. You know, it's uh-uh. it's closed off. You don't really hear the crowd. It's Big not. Windows, it's yeah. not the same to the point where this year I don't think I necessarily had the choice, but I did let my bosses know I want to cover the NFC game. I don't even want to. I don't want to be at the Patriots game. What kind of? I don't really? want to wait, 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 cover ca- Where are your emotions? Oh, you don't want to cover it. I don't want to be there covering like the team you root for. Yeah, I could. And I'm could and I would and I also thought, well, either they'll lose and that's annoying, and I'll be covering that, or I'll cover them in the Super Bowl anyhow. So how was the Eagles press box compared to other press boxes? Well, because the week before I noticed there was some cheering. In yeah, there. the week before I noticed there was the most Homer. They didn't care about that. <laughs> Is that they, right? They were yeah. loving it. Yeah, uh, were you loving know what? I love it. <laughs> that's the way you should be. You know, they now say. I, I I really was not fully aware of all this. My first year here was the year that the Steelers played the Packers in Dallas. Obviously, I'm a Steelers fan. I showed up. First of all, I get there, and uh, I see all of my colleagues in suit and tie. Oh, no. I'm wearing black and gold. No, and you're carrying not. carrying a terrible towel slung over my shoulder. No, you're not. Yeah, of course I was. Why, why, nobody told me anything, and what do I care anyway? I got to play by these by these rules? What am I? I'm, <laughs> I'm a robot? No, I'm a human being. Right. I, I, and so I went in there. Not only did I make it clear who I was rooting for, I I verbally or you know I I I was not going to repress emotion and at some yeah. point uh, I I let out a a bleat of glee and uh, and I was Please. by one of my colleagues oh, by no. one of my colleagues reprimanded I I'm not going to name names but I was I was informed that person told my superior you know Damashek is not supposed to be cheering in here. No. Oh, well, my God. And you, I was, are you I was told, serious? And I said, well, listen, if if uh, cheering for my team in the Super Bowl is wrong, I don't want to be right. And I mm-hmm. continued to do it throughout the game. I can't believe someone snitched on the you. The Wolf, that. are you prepared to sni- to cheer in the press she box? She was in the press box for about a quarter. and But this week it was I came quieter. by, I said hello. We were in a different section. It felt like more like national types and some Minnesota beat writers. So actually the where where I was this week, it was just kind of dead, it felt like. Yeah. It was the wrong place for you to be. Right. I, I was in there first because they have a great buffet. So I had to get in on that. There was roast pork and broccoli rob, and it was delicious. Uh, Eagles would be at the high top. The, wolf, oh. the, one, the Wolf's the one Press who taught me the pleasure of broccoli rob. I had oh, no yeah. idea about what? it. What? I remember when we stopped when we got there for oh, the grab. Oh, that's right. Oh, the blo- broccoli rob's where it's at. I said, how good can broccoli rob oh, be? Oh, my God. It's delicious. Are you kidding me? Yes. Yeah, it's so. almost as good as a primantis. I, uh, I love me some primantis. You do, yeah. yeah. Cool. I love any kind of sandwich. Like I just love sandwiches. Now the wolf. Yeah. You so you do your you do your morning show, whatever it's yep. called, on the on the network. Game day morning. Game day morning. You do that business, uh-huh. and you go. You're there. You're amongst your people. Steve Smith and I went to the parking it lot. Smell delicious. Did oh yeah, they were the best. T- well, I mean, nothing like a tail. We Not, were there. That's one of the people great were drinking in life. behind you. We were there before. First, we got there before they opened. Under the, the cloak of night, you arrived. That's no, 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 the way no. to do it. It was. It was during the day because we went and did. Oh, it's a day. Uh, right, hits, it's a late uh, game. Right. In the for Rich Eisen and and that that show. Name so dropper. we uh, we were there before the gates even opened to the parking lot. So then, as soon as the parking lot gates opened, I mean, it was like people just stormed the parking lot, and it was wow. RVs were coming in, and there were horns being honked. Someone ran out of gas, and there were a couple fans pushing a car into a spot. It was crazy. There's a lot of Eagles RVs, like Eagles. Oh, my God. Tricked de- out. Detailed. There's one, Welcome to Wensylvania. And, like, uh, you know, with, pa- with paintings. There was they one- heard the news, right? <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> there was there was one, you know, it, it was like a painting of T.O. and McNabb. And they were it was like a campaign <laughs> trailer for their Hall of Fame candidacy. And I was like, wow, I kind of respect that. But I didn't know there was. There's so many of those. That's so- a silly thing to be driving around with for most Eagles of the Eagles fans, oh, yeah. a side note, Eagles fans still embrace T.O.? They should yeah. in my book. In my yeah. van. Sorry, sorry. No. no, no, no. It's okay. So yeah, we uh, we got some soft pretzels and and crab fries, and then we went around and played like washers. Have you ever played that game? No, we played some games in the parking lot. Um, then we went inside, and I saw Rosie in the press box. So after he was like, "Why are you here? Like you should be with your people." You I just imagine. Don't you, enjoy the I game. said, "Don't you have?" Friends here because I knew recreate. It was kind of a bad no, spot. no, no reason to tell to tell us. Uh, uh, you know, a few days later, just yeah. recreate it because this I feel like <laughs> is 
you Rosendahl, this dispassionate, like I don't know. I'm, I'm glad I'm he had his binoculars. Like, I don't know. I'm and like he's a, looking at plays with know. his binoculars. Marone's a good coach. I could see him coming up with something to beat. Me down. <laughs> like a, whereas the Wolf's like, woo! I, yeah, yeah well, we did it, Rosie. We're playing in the sumo. I'm like, I, 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 I'll be neat. I'll, I'll be I was fun. excited. I picked the Eagles. I did, too. I did, too. So Rosie was like, don't you have friends here? And I was like, you know what? I do have friends here, and I'm going to go see them. So I have some friends that have a box at the link. So I went, and I hung out with them. And it's like, it's actually um, the woman that I went and met up with, she's the reason why I got into sports. And I, it was my first internship ever. It was a sports radio station. And she was, like, sort of my mentor. And she's, like, a really close family friend. So it was really cool to experience that with her and then a bunch of our old friends. Great. How many beers did you shotgun over the course of the day? You know, I didn't shotgun any beers. No. But I was – I mean, no. but Because in the box, they have all sorts of stuff. You can get They you can used get vodka, to have in the box. Soda. Is that true? Yeah, they use. I, I've been told that in the in the days uh, gone by that they used to have booze in the press box, but they no, uh, not in the press box. She was, like oh, went to the oh, oh, in that box, right? That suite. would be amazing. No, no. they used to. I you know. know, when people denigrate the idea of cheering and having emotion, Harry Carey used listen. to drink during the game. Myron yeah. Cope, whatever. There are many legends who enjoyed a drink along with the uh, with the broadcast. Now, shame the devil that you be a human being. I'd say right. let's go back to the old. I I'll never forget when Larry Fitzgerald. Gerald busted up the seams, I believe, past our friend uh, Ike Taylor in that Super Bowl to go ahead of the Steelers in that game. I had nothing on the line, although, you know, I was rooting for the Cardinals. I stood up and I said, holy, you know, expletive. And I got, you know, people were really? people were aghast. And uh -huh. I and they thought, you know, people I got some hushing, some like some looks. Of, what kind of what kind of world are we living in? Why are you doing this for a living if you have no pleasure? In That's my thing. When people are like, you're such a homer, like blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah, if I like, oh, what? I, I, I can't have some rooting interest. It's like, of course, this, I'm a homer. this is where it started. I've, I've never been to a sporting event where I don't just pick or watched on TV pick a team it's like I was watching the Australian Open when I got back to the hotel at three in the morning and it's like oh should I root for Dimitrov or Kyle Edmund I don't know I'm just gonna pick one and root for one because right. that's what you do of course I mean listen I, I you know this middling podcast uh, is testament to wearing it instead of the nonsense of pretending or or celebrating anybody who is legitimately objective well, I mean that the so what, what's the whole point of, of, so like, of oh, any of it if we don't enjoy it? Right. You're a robot. Congratulations. Like, yeah, you don't right. have feelings. Awesome. You're void of and everything. The people, Great. Shame the devil. Listen, we, you know, I, I'm gonna, I'll talk to Kabali about this, too, because beat writers, they are there every day and every year, and they get to know people too well, and it's a little bit of a turnoff team for team. The other side of it is, though, that you start to like guys on teams you don't like. You like the individuals right. on it. All that being said. That, I mean, uh, it, the, these people who grow to be objective because that because of that sort of thing, that's one thing. But these people who tamp down their legitimate emotion because they think it's wrong, shame the devil, I say. <laughs> you know? I, I won't stand for that kind of business. No. no and no. the we, same people who are who think that's crazy that you would wear, you know, a Steelers jersey because you're biased. The, the, everything they do is racked with bias in terms of the sources that they yeah. have, in terms of the teams. It's, a, it's like, oh, this player didn't talk to me. F that guy. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm going <laughs> to root against him forever. And they, they're all, they all have so many biases. They're acts, so the acts to grind. Yeah, that's ex I mean, that is a great point. The, the hypocrisy is, is something yeah. I have missed. I do love to target the guys who, who would willfully keep Terrell Owens out of the Hall of Fame because he wasn't nice to me. He when I tried to interview Ridiculous. him, he was a meanie. So <laughs> that's right. that's the measure. Yeah. Anyhow, we're not talking about that. I want to talk about your good time. So you had a you, you had a gay time. It was awesome. It was, I, it was awesome. We went to a bar right around the corner from the stadium what afterward. It was great. And then I went back to the hotel and Stacy Dales was there. We had some some drinks. It was so much fun. And then I woke up yesterday morning, Monday morning, at eight AM. All the lights were on in my hotel. I thought that it was Sunday. I thought that I overslept. Our show on Sunday starts at 7. Oh. 
I the panic that took hold of me was so strong. Hey, what's the guy who ran into the pole in the subway doing next to me? What? <laughs> How'd he get in here? Right? Well, oh, I, no. I was horrified when I woke up and I, and I saw that I got into the Girl Scout cookies that were on the bed next to me at some point. Ooh. Yeah, I know. It was it was rough getting back yesterday. I'm not going to lie. This is... Um, all right. I do want, by the way, uh, some business that we'll get to here that I've been uh, chasing Rosenthal on for a little while now. He does do the QB index every week. And I want to address with him about how many QB changes there are going to be mm. between now and the start of the 2018 season. I suspect a great many. And by the way, the results of the games we just watched, I think, impact that greatly obviously Bortles Foles Keenum where are all those guys gonna go Cousins remains the X factor in all of it I also much to Rosenthal chagrin want to do a little uniform review you may have heard that not the, chagrin uh, not chagrin you just don't care you're apathetic about I it. don't have good opinions on it that's okay to be like lesser and what do well, you want to do first maybe before we do all that opinions let's we'll start here of that. we celebrate your your team successes and I don't care and the people oh you oh how deluded do you need to be to think that it's we and us well I mean listen as I always say to people to the players directly and otherwise uh-huh. you think you're you're in your second year on the Steelers and you're from South Carolina you think you really care as much what happens to the Steelers <laughs> as I do it's been 40 years for me I'm right. believe me I'm living and dying more. Um, and it's That's it's true because after even after that Vikings game, like most of the, I went into their locker room and a lot of them are catatonic, and you can uh, and sure the speaking is like the words coming out of their mouth. It's like each one is almost painful. But of course, there's also a handful of like, you know, guys who join the team midway through. They're thinking about free agency, and you don't get the sense with with. Every single one right. of them. And why would you? Every workplace is totally different. It's like some, it's like, oh, you know, we lost. We lost the game. Like that's I, one of two results. That I think that's happened. an interesting spot that you bring up because yeah. the unvarnished truth is this. No jive is the policy, good and bad here in 66. And I'm sorry, Jags fans and especially Vikes fans. Yes, at the end of every broadcast of a postseason game. Hey, this losing team has nothing to hang their head about. Hey, they have a bright future. You don't know either one of those things. I, t- mm-hmm. I totally you have, agree. You have that. everything to hang your hat, head your <laughs> head head about. You just spent the last year working towards getting to the Super Bowl, right. and you just came up sixty minutes short. Of course, you should hang your head. And this guarantee that the broadcasters just so flippantly offered every team, they'll be back. Right? Will they? I don't. Whereas, yeah. You maybe, don't know maybe. If I was a Vikings fan, there's no way. I could and watch you'll the Super never. Bowl this year. That, same as losing whatever Patriots deeds. Uh, uh, we see going forward, they're never going to have another shot at being undefeated. Missing that will haunt you forever. Vikings, even if they go to the Super Bowl next year and win it, you're never going to have another shot at a home game. No. That's, that just sticks with you. I'm sorry, that's the truth, that's and that's brutal. that's horrible. Now I want you to see it. it, it uh, you know, you wear somebody else's hat for a minute, and uh, maybe it gives you a little empathy. That brings me to this. Let's get to it. It's time for. Freaky Sunday! <laughs> Colleen Wolf, guess what? All of a sudden, you traded heads with Greg Rosenthal. Whoa. I, know that. I know, that's gross. I know. Whoa. So suddenly now, Greg, Greg Rosenthal Wolf. is is a drunken Philly girl, and, <laughs> and uh, Colleen Wolf is a uh, is a dispassionate. Like, ah, I, was, I think I would finally feel at home. I in my like body. it. <laughs> this is I, what I've been going I'm for. A drunk Back Philly there. girl. <laughs> Belichick's a very good coach, but he might. Okay. He's not in fact. All right, so I'm from New England. All right, so now you're here we go. What, what happened? I don't know what you, I don't know what just happened, but all of a sudden you're switching brains. Whoa. Okay. All right. Greg Rosenthal, tell us why you think the, uh, why do you what think the New England Patriots are going to win this game against the Philadelphia Eagles? Well, that's easy. It's the Patriots. Mm-hmm. They, they always win. You, you, I, look what Nick Foles is going to come in to Minnesota and beat the Patriots. <laughs> like the Minnesota. that's not going to happen. I can't, but, but you know, so, but now I got to channel Greg a little bit. Those Eagles, he does, he does go over to the Eagles a little bit. So those Eagles, they have a good defense. I don't know. It's going to be a good game I've been I've been thinking about the Eagles all year they've been good all year but you say know. something say something like hey my guys are gonna have to this play is all their set best up game he wants you season. to do an insulting imitation <laughs> not happening. I don't want that at all why do I want that what do you find my impression of you insulting 
I think it's pretty yeah. spot on. It's good. It's a good impression. It's a it? little insulting. <laughs> It's a little insulting. I mean, I think all of your – to, to be fair to you, and it's not personal to me, yeah. I think all of your impressions are a little insulting. Yeah. Thank you. You're Chris Wesley and your hands this Thank all you. of them. <laughs> Thank right. you. Right. Actually, that's owed more to my uh, actual lack of mastery of impressions. But if, if that's how you take it, so be okay. it. Uh, I, I want to see Greg as a drunk Philly girl. Say, But say this, though, first. Okay, say, no, tell me. Say, uh, say like – if the Patriots are going to win, they're going to need to have their best game of the oh, season stop. because, uh, because <laughs> the Eagles have a dynamite pass rush. A lot of you that you know do Belichick talk. Do be- Belichick doesn't say anything though. Well, we're going to have to have our best game. He's going to yeah. be talking. Rip your sleeves. going to be talking. Right. No, I need to. I need. Uh, do we have scissors here so I can cut my sleeves off? Now all of a sudden I'm just channeling Belichick though. It's basically we're just focused on Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. Well, what about your uh, your coordinators are leaving? Isn't that like a distraction? They're trying to put together the coaching staffs. We're just focused on Philadelphia. Mm. That's it. Colleen, tell us what uh, he is going to talk up uh, Brandon Graham and Fletcher Cox. Mm. And why, why wouldn't he? They may just made the Super Bowl. Donnie Jones. Listen, He's a you're special teams guy. Listen, you're now Colleen Wolf. Right. Tell us. Uh, tell us what uh, scares you about the Philly Eagles. Wait. No. Why the Phil? Tell us, Colleen, why your Eagles are going to beat the Patriots. I'm getting very confused by this stupid game. Because it's time. Because all things must end. Because oh. no one thought that the underdog Eagles were going to win any games in the playoffs. They took care of the Falcons by being the best defensive line, by being the best offensive line. They took care of the Vikings. I mean, they were underdogs in a game at home that they won 38-7. to If that doesn't turn people around, I don't know what does. This is the oldest formula since football was invented. You got the best offensive I'm line. I'm fired up. And the best defensive line in the league. And most, maybe most importantly, this is not the best Patriots team to have made the Super Bowl. This reminds me a little more of the 2011 New England Patriots who lost to the Giants in that Super Bowl. It's a it's a fine Patriots team, but they've kind of overachieved a pretty lame uh, front seven on defense. I mean, the Jaguars had them down 10 points in their own building. Yep. They're going to be in neutral field. America, come with us. The Eagles are now America's team. Ooh. I, I mean, that was, you know that was sorry. amazing. I'm I think sorry. We need- the Wolf, if you want to try to come back, I mean, I'm sorry, Rosie, you know, if you want to try to come back here, you can. But uh, that was that was pretty good stuff, inspiring even. I've spent my entire life not liking the Patriots. I mean, that was a Wolf. I mean, you're doing it wrong. I can't do it. I can't do it. It's not in my DNA. I mean, it's not <laughs> physically possible for me to be a Patriots fan. The last time the Eagles went to a Super Bowl, they lost to the Patriots. Right. How about go go wrong? I don't know who wins now because, yeah. uh, because morally I like where the Wolf's <laughs> coming down here. Now, now that I'm out of you know character, because I really yeah, right. stretched hard there to really embody <laughs> yeah, yeah. Colleen Wolf, you know, go back and watch the last ten minutes of that game, yes, and and see football at its most precise, where you need to practically make every play the right play to somehow win that game against the Jaguars, and then they somehow do it. So everyone who hates the Patriots, and it seems like that's everyone out there, I believe that even if I wasn't a Patriots fan, I would appreciate that it's it's like I appreciate Aaron Rodgers. I appreciated Peyton Manning when he went to the Super yeah. Bowl. I mean, this is some greatness. This is some... This is stuff we haven't ever seen before. I, well, literally true. Even and even in uh, even in days where uh, parody wasn't the goal, uh, you know, as as the uh, the league is structured at this point, it it feeds parody and for Brady to defy that and Belichick, and that's really what I've been saying now for at least half a decade. The weird thing is that it's not a dynasty. I don't know what word you call it. I guess dynasty is yeah. uh, is the one you would call, it, but it's really two guys. It's not it's not that the Patriots. Have over what it's two two people have Belichick has yeah. figured out some code like a video game like here's how you win I don't, I don't know what everybody else is up to but just do these things and we'll win every time and then he has this QB who is always nails the two greatest do you agree with me on this Rosendahl I think I, the thing I've always said in spite of the 28 to 3 rally with uh, 17 minutes left or whatever it was um, notwithstanding, I still think his greatest deed, or at least until Sunday, was coming back against the Seahawks down 10 in the fourth quarter to, to steal that game. Malcolm Butler notwithstanding, too. This one, I Brady's think, trumps did. it. Woo. Brady's. I think, wow. this one, I think this one trumps it. You get up 10. When Lambeau made that field goal, I quietly uh, thought, 
Well, that, I don't. I don't know if everybody feels this, but the game's over. Now. Right. They're not going to be able to. They're not going to be able to do anything now. They have ten points at this point in the game. They're not going to rally from this against that. Pack that was the game. fourth quarter. He hit yeah. that field goal. Uh, I. I don't think it trumps it. But it felt as unlikely or more. I, w- I would say I was more surprised, especially rewatching it. I mean, I, I watched I watched it on the plane because I you know I'd watched it just in the Eagles press box, which yeah. is a strange place. I think it was more unlikely than the Jaguars comeback was more unlikely than even that Seahawks one was. How did the you fact even- that it was third and eight that when that it was yeah third and eighteen. The fact that they punted three times in the second half across midfield on fourth and short, which is something Belichick like would never do, but it's 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 a testament to his feel for the game that this defense is so good. We just need to stretch out this game I, with more possessions and do field position. And ultimately, I do trust my defense right now more to get stops. And it was yeah. ultimately like the right decisions to make over and over. I don't know. How did you watch? That's interesting. Watch and also, playing? Belichick, as I've told you before, and I think you kind of agree with, he cho- the history forgets he choked in the last minute of 49. He just got away with it. Yeah. He choked. He should have called timeout. He froze, and it wound down and uh, – it now makes it seem like, ah, he got in Pete Carroll's head. No, he didn't. He choked oh. and got away with it. Oh, stop. Wait, That's I, true. But I need to rewind here. And by the way, I want to say one thing, bigger for the record, okay. off uh, on the heels of Rosenthal. Yeah. I have I have the greatest admiration for Tom Brady. Oh. I, don't want to, I don't want people to think that yeah, no. you hate the pay. I don't hate the pay. I, 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 I hate their success against my team. Of course. I don't like that. But I, Tom Brady, yeah. But it's a, the yeah, fact it's that those three comebacks he doing. just came up with were all done after he was, what, 37 years crazy. old. Is as Wes, as uh, Chris Wessling wrote uh, in the uh, crazy and dead on point, which is you could split his career in half and he goes to the Hall of Fame in both both those halves. It's, oh, that is it's such insane. a good. It's right. It's like because di- they do call it kind of one dynasty. But really now, especially if they can beat the Eagles, it's two diff- they have two different dynasties. Well, let's not get ahead of yourself four years there, Greg. Each one, if they can win. Yeah. Come on. Wait, so Do it for a mayor. Hold on, hold on, hold on. How did you wa- watch the game on the plane? Oh, uh, well, you can download on Game Pass. You can download? On NFL.com. I didn't even know this. You can download games to your iPad, so you don't need uh, This would have been really helpful. Interwe- all season. Oh, yeah. 20 it's, weeks. It's terrific. You can uh, listen to Tony Romo talk. I mean, because <laughs> I didn't get that in the press box. It was, the Wolf. He was great. Uh-uh. It must have just been a singular day. Is it the greatest day of your sports life? <laughs> Yeah, uh, it, it's well. I mean, the when the, the Phillies, Phillies won the World Series, that was, that was better. That was great, and it was split. Remember, the game was split because of the weather. Mm-hmm. Like, so it was almost two days there. Oh yeah, and then that was weird. Even even when they had the parade, I was still kind of like, did they win? Is it really? It's it's still like this is definitely happening, right? Because I spend so much time waiting for utter devastation to hit. And On behalf of the other side of Pennsylvania slash, uh, you know, the the state that owns uh, six Lombardi trophies, we mm-hmm. hope you make it number seven. I don't know where this weird thing came from in the last 48 hours that's, that Pittsburgh people are rooting against Philip. Certainly not in this no, case, of why course. Would they? But in general, there is just no rivalry to speak of between the Eagles. There's just there's nothing. Never, there's never been. We hate the Flyers. the Flyers. No, we hate the Flyers. Right. But the, I, for, it, there's just no. And connection. what about like a which city is better type of thing? There's no. a little bit. Of I that don't know why. No. It just, just never. I've, ne- I've never had a conversation with anybody from Pittsburgh okay. about like, oh, the Eagles. As long as they lose, right? You know, nobody. I, yeah. People no. just don't care about for them. the Eagles. It's just mainly the Cowboys and then the Giants and Redskins. Now we hate Penn do. State. Well, oh. well, see, even that's a little split. A lot of Pittsburghers go to. Pat. We're not talking about oh, yeah. that, right? Anyway, now. let's jump in now. I want to talk about uh, the quarterback league here and uh, the state of it. First of all, the Wolf. What do you think about what I said before uh, these title games were played? All of a sudden, I feel like I've been sold a bad bill of goods and and have then perpetuated it onto Football America, or at least the consumers of this show. Um, by saying that, yeah, you it, you read, you practically are not going to a Super Bowl if you don't have a really high end quarterback. But all of a sudden now, I'm starting to think, you know what? With the Brown uh, using the Browns as the personification of my new way of thinking, you know what they should do? They should use those first two picks on the best defensive players they can get, and they would be immediately relevant. They would be immediately relevant in 2018 if they put Miles Garrett and two other dynamic You're defenders crazy. out there. They I would be like know. the Jags. That's the Jags model. But the Browns, they 
I mean, and then throw money. How about this? Throw money at Kirk Cousins, and now you're really low. You still need a mid-level quarter. You need like at least. All right, so I said, go get Kirk Cousins. Now you get a high-end one. You get you have the money to do that. Now you're really a dangerous team overnight. And a lot of times, well, you also don't know who's going to hit in terms of a quarterback. That's the other thing, right? Rebuild it. All of a sudden, Aaron Rodgers tells us in in his 2017 season. If you build the, your entire team around the one guy, he's immortal, and if not immortal, he is a mortal, mortal. and therefore is uh, it, it can can have his knee hurt, and then when that happens, the whole season's over. Plus, Better to just build up this massive, this dominant defense that makes you uh, more impregnable to uh, you know more, you know less uh, easy to take. Oh, yeah, the Eagles are a good case. Right, that, that right. Pass rush. But if you have the picks and you have that high of picks and it's a gr- and it's a good quarterback class, you can't just pass it up. This is a good quarterback class. You already passed class. on Wentz. Yeah, I don't buy that the league, At least for the, the, Browns. the league is somehow changing away from quarterbacks being absolutely uh, necessary. Well, I think this year you was an anomaly. Key, or you, you could also be the Minnesota Vikings and build up this defense, which right. has more continuity and talent over three years than, than any defense around and was – technically ranked number one and then you can go give up 38 points to the Eagles in the NFC championship yeah. game anyways I'd much rather have I'd much rather have but the you quarter. really do need a solid offensive line I feel like yeah I mean for three years we, when we did our what you actually have to have to get to a Super Bowl versus the myths like a number one receiver and so on you don't need to have that you do need to have it's it's the least sexy um answer but it it, it, it as it happens stability uh, on both sides of the line. The one thing that right, throws it all out of whack are the, the Patriots. The Patriots d- right. defy all those rules. You don't have to run to win. The Patriots have proven that with Super Bowl uh, uh, victories in the past. But for the 31 other teams, there are certain truths that exist, and you're exactly right. Yeah. I mean, look at what happened with Nick Foles in this last game, the way that the offensive line played. I mean, we all know about the defensive line. We've been talking about them all year. But the offensive line kept him so clean. He had so much time on so many different plays. Yeah, they're very – like they're big and they're very diverse. Like they're a very tough team. Like their running numbers haven't showed up huge in the playoffs, but being at those games, they ran when they needed to and when they wanted. And to. they did, and they were down Jason Peters too. They've I do. Down that's him. that is the undercovered story of the NFC this year. When Jason Peters went down, watching that game, that was a Monday night game, I believe. Watching that game, I remember in that moment thinking, ah, that's a shame. That's yeah. Even, I mean, obviously when Wentz went down, you thought, well, Nick Foles, that's, that's, when Peters went down, you thought, I mean, you know, you talk to NFL players, they say, you know, Jason Peters is perhaps in the top 15 best players in pro football. When he went out, I thought, well, people may not know this, but that's it for them. Well, you saw the reaction that he got from the crowd in that game when it happened. He was being carted off and he he got, everybody went wild. Depth on the line. That's, That's what saved him. It's true. Vitae. Holy. Palapuli Vati Vitae. Oh, the world. Hey. She went back into her own head. See, Rosenthal couldn't do that if he was doing an impression mm-hmm. no. of you. Big V, that's his nickname. All right, Rosenthal, you do the index, and uh, the wolf, I'm interested in uh, in your insight on this as well. Let's break it down. Here's my thing. I have bet uh, Matt Money Smith and Handsome Hank uh, digits on this. Fingers, I mean. And the, the cost is a finger if you're however much you're wrong on either side of this. I say I set the over under at 10 right now that between from the start of last season to the start of next season at least 10 teams will have new starting quarterbacks and to show how generous a soul I am I'm not even counting Deshaun Watson Tom Savage. That 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 doesn't count. Okay. That, that doesn't Deshaun count. Watson's their starter in 2017 for uh it's almost one third of the league. That's right. Now go through it and tell me. Let me tell you what I think. I think in the highly likely to change category, okay. Buffalo, the Jets, Jacksonville. See, I wrote this down six weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Still think Jacksonville. It's a weird spot, though, that now all of a sudden right. with his performance, I think you really take him out? I don't know about highly likely, but I'm going to go. He's in dangerous territory. Possible. Yeah, I, I, I'll lower him to possible. Kansas City, I think they, they go Mahomes, Which is certainly. Uh, ridiculous, though, I think. Do you really? Yeah, I, because I, I think I, Alex Smith had a good year. He did, good but year. I do not. I, listen, he. It is. I, I know that it's circum. People always point to what you're going to just take one play and you're going to blow that one play after what he did for the preceding four months. 
yeah, what he does in the fourth quarter of the big game when it's on the line is everything. And there were a couple plays on that last possession that they had against the Titans where he just flat out seemed like it was too big a moment for him. He panicked. He made decisions that were too quick. He he was not cool under pressure. And I think you look at that and say, well, he, he is a quarterback who can get us to a level. He cannot get us over the hump. I've supported Alex Smith a long time, but I, I, I just don't think if you're Andy Reid, two divisional round or without wild card this year, but then the divisional round game against Pittsburgh in the second half there, he made some crummy throws that were, he, it, cut, he had a couple plays. There was a very random game where they barely had the ball. I mean, if you put him on the Eagles right now, I'd, I'd be even a lot more worried, for instance, that the Eagles are going to go win that Super Bowl. You get him with the right coach, all that. With that said, it's the contract. He only has one more year in his contract. You're not. You're. There's no. There's no consideration of giving him another contract. Mm-hmm. So why not trade him now while you can get a couple? You can get some high picks. That's for a good him. point. Denver Broncos are going to change their quarterback. That brings me to four. I've got Buffalo okay. Jets, KC, Denver, Washington's going to change five. Arizona's going to change six. Here are my fifty fifties. I'm going to drop the Jags to that. The Giants are now oh, easy out of there that. on on Washington. What's that? You don't, an, I, don't, I don't think that's an easy Kirk? one. I think there's. A, you think they're going to pay him thirty million dollars? I think that would be that. See, that's what I'm talking. It about. might. If you think that that just makes everything okay, that's that's a, a faulty I philosophy. Think, if you're DC, I point. think they they have seem to have mixed feelings on him. But I think if you were going to Vegas or whatever, and you're setting uh, who's the favorite to have Kirk Cousins on their team next year. I think it's, it's the still Redskins. the Redskins. You think so? And maybe it's not even – maybe it's less than 50%, but it, they, I would think they're more likely than – Where's he I, more I, likely I, to be? There, Jacksonville, Minnesota, Cleveland? Minnesota? That would be Ooh, interesting. Minnesota. I, I think – honestly, I think he stays in Washington with the Redskins. That's, think, he's the big chip. He's the X factor in my entire uh, Well, look at the thing. way that he played with all of the injuries that they had all season long. And all of the, all the things that happened, he he still was the constant. And I think pe- people think the Jaguars that that's the team that are that's going to go after them because he's got it's a great setup. They've got about eighty million dollars in like cap space, and they can just give him like all this money. Tom guaranteed. Coughlin knows him it well. Look, it looks you know, and if you were him, you would think it would be a great fit. Do you have to though? But if you're the Jags, and you know, I I reject the thing. Wow, they'll the future's so bright down in Jacksonville. Oh, they'll be right back next year. I feel like, in a weird way, certainly they'd rather be going to the Super Bowl in a week and a half. But as it is, I feel like they get away. This allows them to now get away with Blake Bort- uh, from Blake Bortles. Whereas if he beats the Patriots in Foxborough, you are it's a Flacco in Baltimore thing. Well, what are we, what are we gonna do? We now we must keep him. We have no choice but to retain him, right? I guess. I mean, yeah. If he if he wins the Super Bowl, of course. I also have been told. I guess the, the Vikings the Ra- the Ra- know that that Ra- that Case Keenum is not the long term answer. They might be jammed into bringing him back, but they know that that this is not something that sustains. Well, especially with yeah. Pat Shermer leaving there. I, Bortles' contract is interesting. People think because they picked up his fifth-year option that they have to keep it, but that's not guaranteed. But it is guaranteed on March 14th. So they can do this thing where they can kind of play around, see if they can actually get Cousins, or see if they can trade for Alex Smith. Because other than that, what veterans are definitely an upgrade on Blake Bortles? I mean – It'd be weird to like go after Case Keenum or something like that. But if you yeah. can, maybe if you can get Alex Smith or Bortles, I mean or uh, Cousins, then you do that. But if they find out that's not happening, then they'll just bring back Bortles and draft someone. Here's another one on my fifty okay. fifty list, and I don't care about Marv coming back or not. It's time get get rid of Andy already. It's enough with Andy, right? I know he made the big even throw. The, to even after that big play, the one play we're gonna worry really? about the way he made one throw. He's a, he, I mean, he, uh, the the verdict is in. He had one of the worst. He's Andy Dalton. He's not. He's Andy Dalton is not going any higher than where Andy Dalton is now. This is it. This is the best Andy Dalton's going to be. Well, but I thought this exercise is predicting. We are. You need <laughs> to win your your digits. Right. Send send away Andy they, Dalton if you're the Bungles. They're not going to do it. You think they keep him? I think they keep. They won't yeah. even. They won't send away Marvin Lewis. They're definitely not sending away Andy Dalton. That's a great he's point. <laughs> pretty cheap. Next, the okay. Cleveland Browns. Well, that's a definite. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's so where, what's the I'm number circling? at now? That should be in your definite category. All right. San Francisco 49ers have already made their change, so we know that they're going to be different. What about the Dolphins? Any chance on uh, Tannehill? I thought so, and I was told no. 
Okay. You know, yeah. Because I did this same exercise for an article in late December, so I, you know, texted the people that know more than me, and they said no way that it'll definitely be Tannehill. I don't know. I think I I, I still wouldn't be anywhere. totally stuck. Seven we know is coming back. What about Andy Luck? What about Jacoby Brissett? Uh, who, who knows if Andrew we don't know Luck what is healthy. Be healthy, yeah. I think Andrew Luck. If if the, if the Colts could find anybody to take Andrew Luck, I think they would not mind no. getting rid of Who's that deal. Who's gonna take You're him? Crazy. You're Why is it crazy? You don't know. Talk about not knowing. Talk to people who know better. Then let's talk to some MDs who are neck specialists. I don't know. Just, what, what, well, we know if he is. can't play, then no one's gonna trade for him. And if he can, he's. The quarterback the still, I think, right. other than Carson Wentz, that maybe the most people in the league would love to have. I mean, Josh McDaniels, in theory, is taking that job because of Andrew Luck. I I hear you, but also you five or seven years ago or whatever it was, the Colts didn't want to take the risk, and they found the suitor in the Broncos who were willing to take the risk. Um, the Chargers will not change quarterbacks at this point, although I would think they would mind. Uh, uh, you know, Philly Rivers is getting up there. I'm not, not that they not yet, not want yet. to, but I could see him being anxious and, and wanting to – although that, that team's setting up nicely. So, okay, yeah, no. scratching them out. Drew Brees is uh, some late noise there. I've always no. targeted him as a guy who might move late in his Well, career. he's not a free yet. agent. Right. So that's been under. Oh my God, that's one, right. Two, three, it's under the radar. Six, seven, I would eight, be nine, still nine. very surprised. This definitely happens. But I he, get the ten. I get the ten, and it, it it is not. I'm not sweating that much about it. I got Buffalo, Jets, KC, Denver. Um, I got to cross out the Giants now. Uh, Washington, Arizona, Cleveland, Minnesota, San Francisco. Yeah, but San Francisco already. Ha- Jimmy G, does that count? He wasn't there. No, he wasn't even there until November. Oh. He doesn't count. Oh, that doesn't count? No, I said start of the season, and I gave oh, you the start, start of the season last year. Okay. Another theory I want to run by you, Rosenthal, and uh, the Wolf, but he's tied into New England. What about my what about my prediction, my hypothesis that Belichick is done after this season oh. in New England? You think if they – what's more likely that he's done with a win or a loss in the Super Bowl? I don't think it matters. His decision has been – Really? Yeah, I don't think it's – I don't think this it, – the, the result of this game has any – I think it's wishful thinking, but <laughs> you've had much worse theories. This one has a, uh, an air of – yeah, that, you can see that. Well, especially with the <laughs> – well, well, so I would love to hear the worse theories. I'd love to hear that. I just that. heard some. Like what? Give, give me one. I can't think of them off. <laughs> you listen. Yeah, you, here's what they do. Oh here's no. what they do. Here's what the heroes of around the NFL do. They lord I'm over Switzerland me. in this situation. They lord the over situation. me that many years ago, four years, three years ago, that I said Ryan Mallett was going to be <laughs> great. I didn't even remember. That. I thought that was it. But yeah, the Ryan Mallett prediction. What do I know? What he's up to late at night? What I'm judging him based on. What I judge the QBs on is how they look when I'm watching them in college football games. I watched him and said that guy's got the goods. Generally, Damashek, the QB whisperer, whispers uh, good noise into your ear if you're listening. <laughs> this was a this was a this was a failure. All right, wow. I, I, I don't know what he I didn't know what he was doing. I, I don't know what, what he's up to. But in the off hours, that's this, not my business. This was, this was a thing, huh? I didn't realize it. Oh yes, they're, they're, it's a major the, thing. Ryan Mallett's always the one that I get thrown back in my face. All right, I missed on one. <laughs> missed on one. I mean, God, he, he never lo- he never looked get particularly off good back. even with the Patriots. Give me a break. That's, that's true, but I, I yeah. listen. All right, the well, Belichick I, thing. I, I'm not revisiting the Belichick the thing. Yes. It has an air of if ever he was going to leave, it would be a principled decision based on something that happened that you know he just didn't think was so right. That and Bill if the, O'Brien if the, noise if the, down there was weird, couldn't he maybe? Uh, you no. know, no, not with Deshaun are, Watson now. And why? I don't like the whole. I get it. The, no. the time is right, but why is McDaniel? Why are McDaniel's and Patricia both? Openly just taking gigs, you know, so early on the process. The McDaniels thing doesn't seem 100% done. And part of me thought, I wonder if, you know, if Belichick did quit, then McDaniels would change his mind. But I think that's keep our eye on it. likely, yeah. I think he agrees. He doesn't want to admit it. And by the way, one other thing. As a Steelers Don't fan, people, it, when I bring this up, Patriots fans hit me up on social media and saying, wishful thinking, oh, what a loser. You want those guys to – I am competitive. I don't like the Steelers being owned. I wish the Steelers would have vanquished yeah. this team. I don't want them to break up until we knock them off. I mean, and even now if we do, it's like the excuse will be, oh, well, that was when Brady was 42. Right. You know, Right. I mean, if if they win one more, it it's like – 
you, you, it's fine if Belichick quits if they win one more. Well, how more? How many more do you need? It's it's gonna only go downhill. I I just can't imagine him not doing what he's doing now. Yeah, I, I can't imagine him leaving. I could see him doing a Pat Riley kind of gig. Really? Yeah, maybe. What do you mean? Just you know, being president, you know, have some overarching title. Tom Coughlin in mm-hmm. Jacksonville, same sort of setup. <laughs> No? I, think, I think he wants to coach. I agree with Colleen. I think he'll be coaching somewhere. I think it'll be in New England for sure. Yeah. Well, I, sure. I, 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 I think it'll be for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, uh, let me uh, let me tell you about something, uh, Greg. This uh, this goes out to you. Oh. Um, I want to talk about something that may you may be a little embarrassed about. I don't want you to be, and you don't have to be anymore. Introducing Control GX, <laughs> the first gray reducing shampoo from Just for Men. <laughs> I That's think this great. is right up your alley there, uh, GR. You're going to look even better, more youthful than you already do. Just for Men helps men look their best so they can celebrate who they are, what they achieve, and how they feel, no matter what the curmudgeons in the press box have to say about That's it. Right. You cheer. You cheer. Let your fan flag fly proudly and uh, and with your glorious uh, dark brown mane, you know, not not uh, held back by any silver strands sticking out. Yeah. You know? What? I, this is the one uh, ad copy I, I ever read too, so I'm very familiar with. Oh, you are control. I don't know what you mean You're by ad GX. copy. I'm just was talking about something oh, okay. I'm passionate oh, okay. about, which is uh, D- oh, what's your what? GX. How's your grade? Do you use it? Yes, for men. Well, you can see it. It's I got some in my beard there. Yeah, so I you, like it on my. temples. You don't use the product though. I've got it on my temples there. I guess I could uh, erase that and make I, it a thing of the. Past. I mean, there there are whispers around the company that <laughs> that. I, There's I, been you know, coloring I've, going on beforehand. From whom? The handsome one? The handsome one loves this bit. I've not colored my hair. No, Why you, am I? Do. I am vain, and I'm vain enough There's to tell bright, you like, I pepper in. in I, I have multiple sources hair that, have, that have speculated. Uh, I'd love to hear. I'd love. I mean, well, here's the. <laughs> He's so angry. How a lot? Because it's it's a crazy theory. What am I hide? Am I am I am I someone who hides? I cover in my bald spot. I freely concede. I I dump pepper in my hair into the flesh yarmulke to make it go away. Yeah, you. Close if I were that vain, but willing to concede that, why would I then say no? I draw the line at admitting that <laughs> that I'm putting uh. stuff in my hair. How many? Whispers? But maybe you use that as a cover Look for the this. other thing. You know. Look, at, I have grays in my hair, but it won't be there after I start using. <laughs> Control GX from Just for Men. You shampoo it in, you rinse it out, and you move on. It's that easy. Most guys get the results they want in about two weeks. Perhaps I should even try that out. And by the end of the Super Bowl, I will again have a glorious, Ooh. youthful mane uh, to be proud of. Look forward to a smart new look. Get 25% off Control GX using the code DAVE, D A V E. At controlgx.com. That's Dave. Twenty five percent off Control GX at controlgx.com. Yeah, why be I a think. silver fox if you what could just be people? a fox, right? Exactly. Yeah, just be a fox. <laughs> Drop the silver. I don't understand. What, what, Johnny what, Fox. What crazy? <laughs> right. What crazy charges? I mean, that's completely illogical. Emma VP. What do you think about that? They're cracking up. Back Do you think that could happen? Do you think I would dye my hair, but then I would be like, whoa, no, no, don't ever mention and that. He puts hey, by the way, I don't mind in. you t- talking about the fact that I got a flesh yarmulke. I don't know. I think we're going to have to investigate these sources, though. I know. I, that, that's what I'd love to do. Yeah. I do it as a response <laughs> to you mimicking my dear mom back in London town. That's why I tell our colleagues about it. Well, now, now Handsome's mom and Handsome sound exactly like Yeah, that's not really I don't know what's does. going on there. I, I don't know any. Hey, let's talk about, uh, while we're into aesthetic things, uh, this is a good place to do it. Where do you come down the wolf on the decision by your arch nemesis in Super Bowl 52 to go white? This is only, um, I get, what, is it the third time it's happened? Uh, no, the fourth time, I believe, that this has happened in Super Bowl history, that a team who has the choice uh-huh. chooses uh-huh. to go white. Because the Cowboys obviously have always worn white at home during the Super Bowl era. Right. In Super Bowl five, they were required. The rules then dictated that if you're the home team, you have to wear your dark jersey. Mm-hmm. The Cowboys at some point, I think it was 13, were able to make the choice, and they chose white, but that's what they always wore right. wear in Dallas to this day. Same goes for the, for the uh, Joe Gibbs Redskins of the 80s. They preferred the white. They started doing that like your Eagles did to try and curse the Cowboys. This whole NFC I East know, thing. I know. It's so true. It's great, but it's true. Do you know this, Rosenthal? You don't care about uniforms. No, that I've heard this, but you're – 
re-illuminating it. About yeah. seventy nine eighty ish. All the NFC East adversaries recognize that the Cowboys are doing something weird. They always wear their white. They're partial to the white. So when they come into our stadium, we don't want them to be happy wearing their home jerseys. Hilarious. So we'll reverse it on them. Which my my uh, my contention is: well, the Cowboys have already won the first round. If you're there that much in your head, right? You're flipping your home jerseys to curse them. But anyhow, the St. Louis Cardinals used to do it. They would wear their whites. And by the way, those old royal blues on the Cowboys were dynamite. Mm. And uh, then the Eagles in the 1980 title game in Philly wore their whites. Wilbur Montgomery and company. Yeah. Jaworski made the Cowboys wear the blue. It worked for the Eagles. So then in 82, when the Redskins in RFK hosted the Cowboys, they did the same thing. They went white and they stuck with it throughout the 80s. They chose to wear white in uh, the Super Bowl, I believe, against the Broncos when Doug Williams took down Elway and company. Anyhow, the Steelers did it as the sixth seed because they perceived themselves to be road warriors on the way to Super Bowl 40, so they stuck with the white. They could have worn black against the Seahawks in Detroit. They went white. They won that game. So now that brings us to this. And they are going to be wearing the I oh the Patriots. Are I'm sorry. White. And the Broncos in '50 chose to wear the white because they had lost the preceding year in the orange, and they had a bad record of wearing the orange in Super Bowls past. So they flipped it, went white, and that worked out for them. I just am, I can't believe how happy uniforms make you. It makes oh, it, and you know so much. I love happy them. to see you know how happy so you are. I love to talk uniforms. Wow, it's one, my, it's one of my passions. Anyway, the Wolf. Do you feel comfortable in the green, or do you not care? I, the only uniform I care about for the Eagles is Kelly Green, and that's not that's not an option right now. So. I know. Shame on both franchises for not wearing their best. You that's both what, have in we your closets about. these great get-ups, and, you're not, and neither one of you. I right. love the old Patriots. Yes. That yeah. logo is so great. And I think the Patriots have one of the worst uniforms now and one of the worst logos, which has bothered me since the moment they switched to the uh, the flying Elvi. So – I like the whites, though, because that's how they got these comebacks that we've been talking about. The Seahawks and the Falcons were both. Mm -hmm. One of our favorite guys in the league, Chris Long, late of your Patriots, now of your Eagles, the Wolf, signed off on this last year. Willie McGinnis has also signed off on this to uh, Super Bowl champion Patriots. Agree that the day Tom Brady retires, you retire the uh, the, uh, flying Elvis uniform Mm. and go back to Pat Patriot. Let it stand as its own era for all of time. I love that idea. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. Because you can't change it now. It would be a curse. I, I think they all should go back to throwbacks. I think everyone should. Let me reel off for you. Although, you know, poor Drew Bledsoe is still, like, he's in the new era, but you just kind of forget about him. Yeah. It was nice they had him, you know, as the honorary captain, and it's like they never bring back Drew for things like that. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. Well, they brought him back in the AFC title game when your reign began in uh, the week after the Tuck Rule game. That's which true. Should, which should have been the Raiders in Heinz Field to play the 13-3 and three Steelers instead. The bum Patriots were sent our way, and then all things got off track, and they have never been right since in pro football. Since that dark day in Heinz Field, I walked out in sorrow with 65,000 other people. Cordell Stewart, atrocious in the clutch in the second half. There's three interceptions in the post game. I'm listening on the radio, barely can hear it through my, through my sorrow and pain. And the, and the, and the interviewer says, Cordell, are you, are you upset about today's result? No, not at all. Sometimes the best team doesn't win. No, no not at all. I got news for you, Cordell. You're alone because 65,000 people are sick. Oh my God. I can't believe he said that. I want to give you the greatest uniform match. You know who this was is feeling not, good after that game? Troy Brown. That was I. I don't get me going on the on the one. You're not one going of, already. You you know Rosenthal that that was a bogus play, the bogus call, a missed right, spot. Yeah, it was a missed spot by the go. officials. You that can always come up with something. They, you know they were as big underdogs with facts. That day as with facts, I can come up with a fact that Josh Miller. Uh, flipped the field, had a gra- had the punt of his life. It went down inside the 10-yard line, flipped the field in a 0-0 game relatively early on. The uh, but, uh, but Troy Edwards ran out of bounds and came back in to make the tackle. The Steelers' uh, bust rookie wide receiver came back out of bounds and, and in to make the tackle. So the referees flagged it, understandably, re-kick, except that they didn't spar- spot the ball on the left hash. They spotted it in the middle of the field. They punted it. Troy Brown took it to the house. The rest was uh, grim history. All right, I want to tell you my favorite uniform matchups in Please. Super Bowl history. Please. 
Packers, Raiders, Super Bowl II, the glorious white jerseys of the Packers against mm-hmm. the uh, the uh, transcendent, number one in all the sport uniform, the black jerseys of the Raiders. Chiefs and Vikings, a dandy, the red, uh, the home reds on the uh, on those Chiefs against the road whites. I miss those on the on the Vikings. Colts, Cowboys, At Tulane Stadium, I believe. That's right. Really? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yep. Muddy there, and it was uh, it rained once again in Super Bowl nine. Funny that they uh, did that twice. I still pine for New Orleans as a Super Bowl site. Colts and Cowboys got it on. The Cow- the Colts went all white. Like I mentioned, the Royal Blue, Chuck Howley and company in the uh, in the. I nifty. feel like you like the all whites. I do like the all whites on the Colts. Steelers, Cowboys, we've seen it three times, uh, and uh, each time it's wonderful. The Dolphins and Redskins played a decade apart, kind of like your teams are playing. Uh-huh. The first time they played, the Dolphins went undefeated in the all-white against the skins and the gold pants and burgundy jerseys. <laughs> the decade later, like I mentioned, they favored the white jerseys after they beat the Cowboys in the 82 title game. They stuck with those, and the Dolphins wore the turquoise. Those two, col- that, those two color schemes are an atrocity. Awful. It makes no sense, and yet when you see them together, they look dynamite. I don't know why. They look great. The uh, the Bears and Patriots was nice because you saw Pat Patriot in one of the uh, yeah. great uh, uniforms in pro football. And here's a wild card. Ravens and Niners. I hate the Ravens uniform. Oh my God, but somehow it looked nice. It looked good. The red jersey against eh, the, not the all black. One. The worst ones ever. Pat's Seahawks. One of the greatest. Uh, one of the top three or four Super Bowls ever. But uh, but uh, dull is all get out. Just Navy Bowl. All it was uh, just a whole bunch of Navy out there on yeah. both sides. Terrible. Niners and Chargers. Chargers had those bad Navy uniforms against the all white Niners. Broncos Falcons <laughs> was no good. All black on the Falcons. Never cared for that. And then the Bungles and Niners. The first time they played each other in f- f- sixteen, the uh, the uh, Niners wore the whites and the. Bengals wore their new. That was You're the like new. a uniform savant. That was the new. That was the first year they had the tiger stripes when they replaced the nicer, cleaner, simpler helmets. Just the orange ones that just said Bengals on them. They should go back to those. That's my first uh, order of business. Wait, uh, well, you think that they should go back to having Bengals on it? But don't sometimes you have, less don't you have an issue with the pants, the Browns pants that say Browns? On the hat, I'm okay with it. Oh, yeah. why is it okay on the hat and not the pants? I can't tell you why. My 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 <laughs> eyeballs tell me it's okay. Okay. All right, listen, I'm over the moon for you, the Wolf. I hope you have a, a great – I mean, legitimately, people say, oh, you hate the Patriots. Oh, those, those, you're, you, you just <laughs> – on a personal level, what I care I, – I now know, like we were talking you're about – You're not over the moon for me. Just me. Sorry, I'm, Sorry Rose. I have, I have many Patriots friends, Patriots fans friends, but – you guys have had uh, so much success. It's not like, oh, I can't believe you got the I mean, all right, you know, I've seen it. Good for you. Like maybe Shane. Times five. Ty, yeah. It's enough already. No one cares anymore. No one's happy for Let's you anymore. Let's mix it up. Right. Yeah. I. That's that's the other side, like rooting for a team. I, people say, oh, you hate this team. You're sorry to say what you're such a – I know people who root for pretty much all 32 teams. Now I'm happy for those people that they got there. I would have been happy for yeah. Maurice if his Jags had gotten there. I would have, I'm less happy not because uh, uh, the Patriots have done it so many times. It's hard to feel glee for that, for a dynasty. But, um, but yes, I, for me personally, I feel bad for – not for myself with the Steelers. I feel bad for the good people of Pittsburgh because – the best thing about pro football in a deep playoff run is it extends the enthusiasm and obscures winter, the bleak yeah. winter. And Ooh. so that's what it that's what it buys you. And I'm sorry personally because Super Bowl week is more fun if my team's in it. Now I, you guys get to I have that experience. I cannot believe it. I can't believe it. What a fun so time you're going to have getting the – I'm sure you're going to be doing all sorts of – Eagles, this and that. Well, Pete. and it was also so fun because I haven't been back to a game in a while. So I, I used to work with everybody in the press box. And so it was so nice to see so many people that I used to work with and just Your catch up with Your week's going to be too. filled with high five and Eagles fans walking down the street. It's going to be a great atmosphere. They're, gonna be, they're a likable team too. I think there's a lot of likable guys. You said – Said, like, yeah. oh, it's going to be fun covering the Patriots and all that. It's like, no, actually, the silver lining, if they had lost that game in my mind, was ultimately at, for my job the during the week, it would have been more fun to cover the Jags because they just would have said more and it's a new story. It's like, what can you write? You know, what's new about the Patriots? Can you imagine? Once the game like, Can you imagine different. being that way? No. Can you imagine? No. Just charmed. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I don't like, know. I'm being I, nice. I'd I like to talk to Clay. 
Yeah, I'd like to like, talk to Calais and Jalen and hear what they, mm-hmm. well, you know, how easy nice. it was to take down my but favorite not, player of all time. Then the Patriots go. We would cut a striking figure, me and Calais Campbell standing next to <laughs> <laughs> For that reason alone, I wish we could have seen that. All right, so bottom line, b- above all else, we agree that it would have been a more compelling Super Bowl uh, <laughs> had it been the Jags then. No, I, I, I do actually think legitimately – Imagine how we would be talking now versus how we're talking about a Patriots Eagle Super Bowl. The the conversation would be just 180 degrees from now. The, the Jags are playing Nick Foles in the Super Bowl. I feel what? like pe- I feel like people would be like, "Oh God, Blake Bortles and Nick Foles." I, well, I think people would have embraced the insanity. I do. That, too. Was, that was what I th- was thinking when. Okay, if the Jags make it, at least it'll be just. And by the way, that is right. not throwing shade at Nick Foles. I'm just saying. No, this, indeed, I would have but, never predicted this to happen. But my point about. Is it really a QB league? If it were Bortles v. Right. Foles, we would, <laughs> we would, no, I don't think I'd be getting as much pushback on that. And we agree we're going to have 10 QB changes or no? I, I, I need it now because your fingers depend on it. My over yes. under is eight and a half. Ooh. Eight and a half. Maybe nine. Let's go nine. Well, how do you go half a quarterback? Well, just that's, it's to, in, you know, encourage betting. I don't know <laughs> what that is, Greg. <laughs> Neither do I, Greg. Neither do I. <laughs> All right, that's it. Let's uh, let's say goodbye to uh, to the two uh, conference champs. Thanks for joining us that's here. That's right. In, uh, we six, did it, six. Greg. You did it once again. Congratulations to you. But finally, the Wolf, you did it. Finally. Um, now let's talk about a team that didn't do it. And the heartache it is caused on the banks of the Three Rivers with a man who knows from the athletic, Mark Cabali. Let's get to it. All right, you've heard more than enough out of uh, Damashek where the Pittsburgh Steelers are concerned. Right now, let's go to a true insider, a guy who's on the beat each and every day, covering all things black and gold inside the building. It's Mark Cabali, new to the athletic, but a new, uh, but not a newcomer, a return uh, visitor here on the DDFP. What's happening there, Cabali? How are you? It's not much. How you been? Well, I've been better. I would have been a lot better, you know, whatever, a week and a half ago had uh, the Steelers taken care of business in Hines, dispatched the Jags, and uh, moved on to the AFC title game. Before we keep it about uh, about that, though, I'm looking at you. We're talking on Skype for this interview, and uh, looming right over your left shoulder there is none other. It's not a. It's not a Steelers poster. It's not a. It's not a Mario Lemieux poster. It's not a Ouija Thompson poster. Nay, <laughs> it is Miyagi and Daniel son. It's a Karate Kid poster. I love it. It's wonderful. I mean, this thing may be twenty five years old right now, and my wife makes me keep it in my game room. But I moved it upstairs just for this interview, just so uh, I could show it off to the world. Is that right? This is sp- uh, this is special positioning just for us, eh? Yes. Yes, that's absolutely right, because my wife, like, put it in the corner down in the game room, said, we're not putting this up, and I slide it out every once in a while, so it's it's legendary. Nobody puts Kabali in the corner, but we're not talking dirty dancing. We can talk Swayze action movies at a later date. I mean, listen, I'm always game for some Red Dawn talk and uh, and uh, obviously Roadhouse, but let's talk uh, Daniel Sign. What did you tell Juju, master, one of the masters, on the Pittsburgh Steelers? Okay, they're not going to win the Super Bowl this year, but along with the Eagles, I think they were the two best uh, touchdown celebrators this year, right? Yeah, Juju and Le'Veon would always come up with different uh, celebrations. And I kept thinking, I'm like, you know, the perfect celebration in my eyes would be the ending of Karate Kid 1 where uh, Daniel nails Johnny LaRusso with the crane kick. I mean, mm-hmm. that would be absolutely perfect. Uh, I guess it would, it would have to be – it would have to have been, I believe, during the Patriots game. You have the, the fierce, uh, you know, mm-hmm. Belichickian guys like Johnny Lawrence, the bad guys. They're Cobra the, Kai. We uh, all agree. And the good guys in the Steelers, a big upset, a knockout punch, knock him out. I think a lot of the linemen could play uh, some of the fans that uh, attack Daniel afterwards. I'm not quite sure who would play Miyagi, um, but I thought it would be great. But I don't think Juju even knows what Karate Kid is. Who, by the way, I, I you know, I bet you he doesn't. That's sad, but that's where you come in. That's what he, I mean, listen, the guy, uh, Juju is a delightful guy. By the way, as delightful as he comes across in social media for people who are at a little more of a distance than you've been over the last six months or so? Yeah, it's tough, though, because he's getting pulled in every direction right now. I've seen it a number of times where guys come in as rookies. First of all, rookies don't want to be, Heard. I mean, you didn't hear much from T.J. Watt at all 
this year, and that was on purpose. Those guys don't like to be talked uh, talked to a lot. They want to prove it on the field. So he's been pulled out in so many directions, and I've seen it go south before where hmm. he's a great guy turned into a suspect guy, Antonio Brown. Uh, but I didn't <laughs> say that. But So let's hope that doesn't happen with him. Um, all right, yes, my wish is uh, is your wish as well. Let's talk about things because obviously there's not uh, – also along with uh, keen touchdown celebrations, the other thing the Steelers led the league in this year, I would say, is uh, soap opera scandals. It feels like just about every week and on through the playoffs. And, and now even transcending the Steelers' season, this stuff continues to go on. Let's start with uh, what do you think happens had the Steelers – rallied, they get past the Jags, they move on. How do you think the game plays out in Foxborough? Well, I think they would have definitely played better than what they did in Jag- against Jacksonville. But you know what? Until I see somebody goes up, go up to Gillette Stadium and beat them, I couldn't be very confident in what they can do. You saw their defense was a little bit suspect at the time. I know Brady was a little injured, so I probably would have had to pick against them if they went up there. But that probably would have been their best chance to date to go up there and and beat them because i mean they totally manhandled them other than maybe one drive uh, that december 17th game and we know the gronk drive what happened there so i think it would have been their best chance to to beat the belichick brady combo to get to the super bowl but uh i probably wouldn't have picked them though uh, I'm with you 100. percent Yes, I would not have picked the Steelers to go up there and win, but I agree that they certainly would have had a puncher's chance. That team is built to beat just about anybody, or can beat anybody on a given day. But of course, everybody talks about the discipline or lack thereof, and then also the scheme. When they lost to the Patriots in the 2016 AFC title game, coming out, several players, including Ryan Shazier specifically, sat here in Studio 66 and told us. Yeah, guys just were missing their assignments. We got to clean those things up. 51 weeks later, after the Jags lost, it was the exact same talk from the players in the locker room. First of all, do you buy that? Is that, I mean, I, I, I actually skip that. We buy that that's the case if the players are saying that. Whose fault is that? I mean, 51, the entire premise of 2017 was this is a reckoning. We need to show up. The Patriots are who we need to vanquish. We're going to be a better version of ourselves and go up to Foxborough and do it. They fall a week short of doing that. Whose fault is it that they're still missing assignments and so on? I mean, I think you'd have to say the players. I see him get drilled on stuff every single day in practice. And one of the big things that showed up every single week that they lost this year was bad tackling. Bad tackling plays over the top, deep plays. And those things popped up when they lost. And they would address it and address it and address it. Then things would happen. You look at that Jaguar game. I believe it was the second play of the game. Bud Dupree said, oh, there was miscommunication. I thought I was supposed to rush the quarterback. I wasn't supposed to, and all of a sudden you got a 20, 25-yard gain. There's only so many times you can drill into these guys' heads what they're supposed to do. However, maybe there's a wrong technique of what they're doing as well because it's not getting through to them as well because it's it's, it's difficult. I, I don't know. It, it's a tough, tough thing. I guess you have to give blame a little bit to everything, but as they say, you can't get rid of all the players, right? Right. And apparently, the players aren't getting rid of any of the coaches on the defensive side. And like I said, you look back. Go back and look at all the problems they've had in Chicago against Jacksonville the first game and even some of the Patriots game. Even last two years ago against Miami, missed tackles, missed tackles. They would drill it. They would be good, good, good. Missed tackles, out of lane assignments. It's just it's just unacceptable. Very young defense, though. So maybe that has something to do with it as well. Those front, I mean, all 11 of them. The old, I mean, you're looking at the oldest guys, Cam Haywood, maybe Kayward's 28 and maybe Mike Mitchell's 30, but a lot of those guys young, but you can't have that excuse. I mean, you're just going to have to perform. It really is. The head scratcher for the entire 21st century in pro football is virtually, well, all right, not the Browns, but I would say 15 to 20 NFL teams have a higher pedigreed roster than what the Patriots have. Belichick just has figured out something. I don't know what he has figured out about the game of pro football that it's basically, I don't even know what you're supposed to call these 21st century Patriots. Dynasty doesn't feel right because it's really two guys you're talking about. You're not talking about it's interchangeable parts and two steady forces throughout. I honestly believe it's one thing. It's Tom Brady, period. Oh, Forget you do? Belichick. Yes, I don't think – I'm a big Brady guy, and I don't think Belichick wins all these Super Bowls. Was it 10, uh, 
Super Bowl appearances now, all the AFC, t- everything what he's done. I don't think he does that with Jimmy Garoppolo. I don't think he does that if Drew Drew Bledsoe played in the you know the mid two thousands. I think it's all Brady. And look what happened again on what Sunday. Mm-hmm. That final drive was all Brady putting balls where they're supposed to be, moving out of the way, making plays. And I think that's what it is. I mean, I don't think it's that big of a secret. I think just think it's Brady. I guess so, but they do get some. Uh, they do get some great performances out of guys that you're saying, "Wait, that guy? Why? Why he he's doing that for this team?" And obviously, it's not transferable for the most part. Garoppolo's played well in San Francisco, but rarely do you see a guy leave the the Patriots, go somewhere else, and thrive as they were in uh, in New England. But I don't want to talk about the Patriots too much. Let's fi- let's solve all the riddles for all the Steelers fans out there who are scratching their head, wringing their hands. Why isn't our team in the Super Bowl? We were promised that that was going to be the case this year. Who is the defensive scheme now owed to more? It seems to me that over the last year to two years that Colbert and, and company have kind of allowed – on some level, at least, it's Tomlin's defense. It seems like they're going more Tampa 2 than what they were. He just he just inherited the 3-4. But correct me if I'm wrong, that that's the direction it feels like. Tomlin is responsible, good or bad, for the way the defense is uh, is looking and, uh, and scheming week to week. Yeah, you know, I think this year, more than any year, he had his fingerprints all, all over the defense more than – years past i'm not quite sure what the reason was they did play a lot i mean they always played zone mostly because uh, like you said the tampa too because they didn't have the personnel to play man coverage they finally thought they had that personnel this year with Artie burns joe hayden even the emergence of cam sutton late in this season but they barely played it i mean they played it against the patriots late other than that they didn't play it very much it seemed like that they would much rather go to that zone that Tampa 2, keep everything in front of you type of situation. It's only Tampa 2. It's cover 3. All type of zones to be able to get pressure with the four guys in front, what they think they have pretty good four guys in front. But they just never went to it at all, and I'm not quite sure why. I mean, they do had some good players. I mean, Joe Hayden was unbelievable, but he was out for, what, six, seven weeks with that broken fibula. Artie Burns took a little bit of a step back as well. I think they put together a plan where they think that they wanted to be good at everything rather than great at one thing. So there, there's a ton of different things out there that they're trying to do and say, like you said, like like you, against the Patriots, they play more man. Against another team, they would play more zone. And I think I come back and maybe hurt them a little bit. I think they got the athletes to be able to play some more man coverage. They just haven't decided to do it. And that's all the talk was in the offseason. Yeah, Let's right. Play more, more and more, play more. Man, they were playing about 15% up until uh, the – Patriots game where they played a whole heck of a lot and was pretty good at it. Um, all right, let's go through a few of those players. Uh, I want to talk Mike Mitchell, but let's start with number 26 there. Is he in black and gold in 2018? Yeah, I, I think that will definitely franchise tag him. They're pretty tight against the cap, cap when everything circles through here and they have to sign some of these extra, exclusive rights guys and restricted guys and practice squad guys, and they're going to they're gonna have to make a lot of they're going to have to make a couple cuts that you're probably going to be surprised at. They're going to have to do a lot of rework and some deals. But, yeah, I mean, I think they really feel that they have that window and they want this one group to have one more chance to be able to do it. What I would do is uh, I would throw the non-exclusive tag on and see if you get any bites out there from anybody who's desperate or wants to offer Le'Veon Bell five years, $65 million, and I'm going to give up two draft picks to take that. I don't think that's ever happened in the history of – uh, franchise tags, but I'd throw it out there. Why not? Last year they did the exclusive tag only on Le'Veon, and that's what made him really upset because he didn't know his worth. He wanted to go out and see what the market set for him, and he wasn't allowed to do that because they put the exclusive tag on him. Hey, maybe it'll be more, maybe it'll be less, but that's what I would do. But I, I don't think they're going to. I don't think they're going to just let him walk without anything this year. I put love that on. idea, and you never know who's so desperate out there that they might do it. <laughs> I would take – you know who if I were – t- you know who I would take a run at? If I were the Browns, I would do that. Out of spite, try to ru- deprive uh, your your bully and steal 26. <laughs> then again, I have a lot of other ideas on what the Browns should do too to fix themselves. Next, Martavis Bryant. Is he back with the Steelers? Uh, he's a interesting character. Is Put he? Put it that way. <laughs> I've, heard, I've heard rumors. <laughs> yeah, he's interesting. Interesting character. I know – I mean, he – Boy, he did one out of town pretty bad mid of the season here. He wasn't 
uh, in the obviously you know he wasn't in much in the offense at all. But I don't know. I, I think that the, the Martavis and his camp thought they were holding him down on purpose just so they didn't have to pay him. Kind of crazy if you ask me. But uh, he might be back on track. I don't know. But but the thing is, if they don't extend him right now with a year left, which would be sometime in August, they would do it. He's going to get the free agency, and he probably wouldn't come back. I mean, that's why I say thinking they're loading up for one more mm -hmm. big run here because he could be gone. Le'Veon could be gone next year, and who who knows who else? I mean, Mike Mitchell would be gone the year after. I mean, the same year as well. Uh, so there's a lot of moving parts right there as well. Bud Dupree could be gone. So that's why I think they're going to try to keep this roster mostly intact moving forward for one last run at it. So you answer Mike Mitchell, then that sounds like you think he is back. Much to the chagrin of most Steelers fans for various um, reasons, too, by the way. It's weird. I, I would think that the average Steeler fan would love Mike Mitchell. He loves to hit somebody. He loves to talk. He loves to get in your face. But for since he's got here, man, he just has not been welcomed open arms by the, the Steelers nation, the Steelers fans. And you would think that some of the things he did that they would remember like, oh, Jack Lambert used to do that. We love him. I'm not comparing Jack Lambert to Mike Mitchell. I get you. There's some reactions. I mean, we've got a guy who's – see, I, I'm a big fan of Mike Mitchell. I think he's a good guy. I think he's actually a little bit misunderstood. Just because he comes out and speaks his mind, people like to bash him. I'm never going to sit here and bash a player for speaking his mind. And it's, it's actually better – for me, so I think he's. I, I, one thing is, I do don't think he. I don't think he had a very good year at all. That's that's the thing you have to watch it. But the thing is, they're so tight against the cap. He's counting maybe eight million. They could save five million to get in, getting rid of him, which they might have to do. But they don't have anybody to replace him. You're looking at Robert Golden. You're looking at J.J. Wilcox, another possible cut. The guy they got from yeah, a yeah. trade. So, don't need that. I mean, I don't think – I mean, before you get rid of somebody, you better have somebody to replace them, and I don't think they do. Precisely. Yeah, I think that uh, most fans watch it, and I'm not uh, knocking them. I think that – well, maybe this is a little bit of a knock. I think people see Mike Mitchell cleaning up other guys' mess, and they assume, oh, see, Mike Mitchell blew the coverage. See, that's why he's chasing him and having to tackle him at the six-yard line. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, I don't think you understand what uh, preceded that, and that's why Mike Mitchell's playing the so-called position of safety, you see. He's the last line of defense. But anywho, yeah, I don't know about the, all the talking. Did that feel to you like that? That after the game, a lot of people pointing fingers at Mike Mitchell and others saying it was the talk that got that. To, I, I say hokum is what I say to that. I say nonsense. Do you Was that an actual factor that you felt uh, impacted the divisional round game? I don't think so. I mean, I don't think Jacksonville really needed any motivation to come in here and uh, play the Steelers well. They already did it back in October. But let me tell you something. Some of the teammates did take exception with what he said. I was in that locker room when that came out, and some of them got in his face and said, what are you doing? We're playing Jacksonville. We're not playing New England. Then he explained to himself this was a story, that interview he conducted three, three and a half weeks ago. Then that sort of uh, blew over. But initially, uh, some of those guys really did not <laughs> enjoy him <laughs> saying okay. anything New England related. But – when your head coach comes out a week, month before that and says basically the same thing, hey, you follow the lead. Trust me, every, mostly everything that comes out of those guys' mouth in the locker room comes out of Mike Tomlin's mouth at one point. So there, you could tell. I mean, you'll talk to five different guys, and they'll tell you the same thing. You're like, wait a second. How in the world is all five guys telling me the same thing? Well, it's coming from the head coach. Mm -hmm. And one of the things is, you know, they don't like the media either, so – <laughs> that comes from the head coach as well. By the way, so, as far as that goes, there does seem to be, it occurs to me, and obviously I'm paying more attention to what the local media, and that's a, a pro tip. Listen, I'm not disparaging the work we do at NFL Media, anybody individually or collectively, but the beat guys who are in the locker rooms every day, make sure you're paying attention to those guys because they obviously are bouncing off the players and coaches a little bit more than uh, a schnook like I am. <laughs> but uh, I do get a vibe. From, you know, from afar and being on the banks of the three rivers around the Ravens and Patriots games in December, I do get the vibe. You guys do not collect. Am I right? Is this fair to say you guys don't love Pittsburgh sports at some point? Is that true? I mean, do you, has it become I'm not knocking it, but do you guys not? I, I, I get this vibe that you're dispassionate about all things black and gold. Fair or no? I, mean, I, I think being in the business long enough will do that to you. See, I'm not going to sit there and root for anything Pittsburgh-related. You're not. Totally 
Why not? No. Why why not root? Why not root? I, Wear it. I don't know. I don't know. It just it, it it never crosses your mind anymore. I guess at first when I started in this business, oh, I might have walked in the Steelers locker room the first time in 2001. And I was like, oh my goodness, there's Cordell Stewart, there's Earl Holmes. <clears throat> Excuse me, and I was like, you know, blown away. Now I see <laughs> Earl Holmes is the one that made you. Earl Holmes is the one that made you swoon. <laughs> well, he, he was wearing a little towel, and that was it. <laughs> oh, I see. I, like the guy was like Adonis. So I was like, oh my lord, look at this guy. And he was just a freaking beast. So that's the guy I remember. So to be honest with you, I more or less root for individuals now. And I think yeah. that might be what a lot of people do. You get to know some of these guys and you really hope they do well. If they win or lose, and this is goes for I can only talk about the Steelers media. Mostly we want them to win because it puts more money in our pocket because we do extracurricular stuff to get money. So I hear you. Some- I'm not knocking you, but I also feel like there is a little bit that people may snicker like, wait, this uh, this Dave loser actually cares whether or not uh, the Steelers are winning. Do you, do you hold that against me? No, no, absolutely I wear not. It. I Let love me tell it. You something. If you're in that locker room every single day and you have to deal with some of the things you deal with, I'm guessing within a couple of years you wouldn't be much of a Steeler <laughs> fan either. Not the just other, saying sports in general. I'm not just saying. I Steelers. agree with no, no, no. I know that's not a thing about that. I agree with you, and it, and the other side of that coin is, and that's kind of where I've landed too. The other side of the coin is, I get uh, tweets or whatever from people. You hate our team. There's officially no team in the NFL I hate because I've gotten to know a couple. Of, I not like anybody is a de- very many of these guys I would call friends, but nevertheless, you know, that's a good guy and you root for him to do well, even if he's on the Patriots or Ravens or Eagles or anyone else. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I can name a couple of guys I root to do poorly. <laughs> I'd, like, <laughs> I'd like to hear that list, but I'm not going to hang you out to dry on that one. Yeah, when they do poorly, I'm like snickering on oh, geez, This is great. <laughs> now I'm going to pour back over your tweets from the last five months and be like, huh, does he seem happy about that fumble by number whatever on the Steelers? Um, anyhow, last thing uh, is, is Pittsburgh right now, I give out every year the Sonic Award for the sports town that suffers the most in any given year. And that's not just who has the worst winning percentage. It's based on expectation. So obviously the Steelers – have been a disappointment so far in 2018, given what happened in their one game is uh, to me, Pittsburgh has taken, has taken a gargantuan lead on the rest of sports America between the pirates, all trading away. Anybody who's worthwhile, the penguins on the cusp of missing the playoffs and the Steelers out, right? Yeah. Those are three poor ones. If you even look a little bit deeper, and I don't know how much you guys know about the college scene around. Oh, here. Don't football. even get me going on pit basketball. <laughs> Basketball, you know, the best team in town and what people are gravitating to now is Duquesne basketball. They haven't made the tournament in something like 30 years. So they're like 14 and 10 and everybody's like loving him. So you might have a point there. I mean, the Penguins might not make the playoffs. The Steelers choke in the playoffs and the Penguins or Pirates are getting rid of every single person that matters. So you, you might have an uh, I remember, I'm not going to – don't get me trying to root for the Duquesne Dukes. I, I, I was out there with uh, – I remember watching Bruce Atkins. Was that his name in the in the Igloo and in the Fitzgerald Fieldhouse when they would uh, when they would do battle? What was the guy's name? I can't think of his name. Paul, the guy who would run up and down. You're younger than I am. That was one of the great uh, local uh, icons. He would, he would come down in the middle of uh, pit basketball games and he would run up and down the sidelines with the cheerleaders to the delight of, uh, of the fans. That's delighting the fans, yeah. man. Why don't you start you doing that? The, you, I want you, you to do that in your in the, uh, this off season. You become the guy. You just run up. You, oh, he would also take his shirt off. Take your shirt off and you just start running up it. and down the sidelines. You don't want to see that. No, I, I could be the Steelers flag bearer when they score touchdowns, okay. run across the end zone and run back. That would be or good. I could, I could be Stilly McBeam too. I, I, I you know, <laughs> although during during training camp it gets kind of warm, so that that. That uniform and that costume cannot smell well. I'm yeah. going to have to fit in that Stilly McBeam costume. McBeam so I- has to be there in August Latrobe? That's no good. I didn't know that was his assignment. Yeah, Stilly McBeam does a couple laps, and he, he you know, you, you could tell they, they dry clean it beforehand, and by the end of camp, he has all pit stains and stuff like that. You know, it'd be miserable. <laughs> all right, so you may become the new Steely McBeam. You are definitely my first choice based on your great Karate Kid uh, celebration to be Chief 
uh, celebration designer along with Juju, and I will be clock manager. What you? That's what else they need. Game clock manager. I'll just sit there. I'll stand next to Tomlin the whole guy, the whole game, and be like, "Hey, coach, this is where you're supposed to take the timeout." You know that kind of stuff. Or you know, let's not onside kick it. That's I, it. I, during that during that part. I was down uh, by the locker room when that happened, and they scored. And I'm like, "Oh, they're going to onside kick." I'm like, "Oh, wait a second. They got two timeouts and a two point conversion. There's no use." I mean, a two uh, two minute warning. There's no use for them onside kicking. And I'm like, oh my goodness, he just onside kicked it. Insane. Like, I mean, really, like, that that was loco. Do you do you ascribe that to panic, or do you think that he meant what he said? That well, our only chance was to have a fluke bounce our way because that's how little faith I had in the defense to stop him three and out. When in fact, you knew they, you knew the Jags. One thing's for sure: some teams might try a little play action to end the game there. I sincerely doubt that the Jags would have done that. I think it was going to be by hook or by – they were going to give it to 27 three straight times and then punt the ball back to the Steelers if they had to. Why Tomlin would kick it deep – with the onside kick there is a head uh, scratcher. Well, look what happened in the Patriots game. They went, what, 80 yards in about 35 seconds to, to almost to go ahead win right there. So things can happen when you kick it deep and, and make them punt like that. So – I mean, he, he's not going to back off of it either. He knows he was wrong. Uh, that's just – I mean, what are the odds of recovering an onside kick? You have to be less than 15%, right? I like better chance Ugh. of stopping three and out. And the, How many the times does an onside ball? kick work? When's the Steelers had a successful onside kick since Super Bowl 30? Hey, well, uh, the last time Boswell tried it, he swung and missed. Remember? <laughs> and that, that, see, look at you with the silver lining. This onside kick was better than that one in Baltimore, at least. See? Now you've given me something to smile about. Uh, <laughs> good stuff, uh, Kabali. And uh, I, I, oh, that's what I was going to ask you. You don't have to denigrate anyone who you're rooting against. Tell us who is so that people know come next August and beyond. Who's the steal or who's the nicest guy that we definitely should be rooting for? Wow, nicest guy. You want to list off 11, you See, can. Well, I, no, I'm going to list off the offensive linemen. I mean, Ramon Foster, tremendous guy. I'm a big Marquise Pouncey guy. David De Castro, you would de- if he wasn't married and had a kid, you would let him uh, marry your daughter and have kids with him. That's how great of a guy David De Castro is. Oh. So I'm, I gravitate towards the offensive linemen. All right. All right, and I'm gonna I, and I gravitate to uh, you as the new Steely McBean. Meantime, thanks, Mark Cabali. Check out his work on the Athletic. Great stuff from him. We also got Josh Yoey there for the people who love uh, black and gold stuff. Also now covering the Pittsburgh Penguins there as they try to stave off shame and uh, as, a, as two-time Stanley Cup champions missing the playoffs. Ugh, we can't have that. Uh, Cabali, have a good time at the Pro Bowl, man. All right, I'll see you. Hope to see you next time I visit the banks of the Three Rivers. The great Mark Cabali, everybody. And by the way, Mark Cabali, K-A-B-O-L-Y at Twitter. That's how you you track his uh, good tweets down for all things Pittsburgh Steelers and beyond. You listen to Dave Damashek. Well, there he goes, and here we go, too, out of Studio 66. We'll have another show for you on Thursday. What do we have? We have Josh McCown lined up, right? Oh, that's Ooh. fun. Looking forward to Kibitz in with him. We'll see if uh, if he has uh, any. Well, Willie McGinnis as well. 55, Willie McGinnis. No Ryan Mallett, though. You could, you, could give, <laughs> you could give McCown your theory about all the teams changing quarterbacks. Ask him if he's, he's on one of them. Consider it done. It's been a thin slice of heaven.